Well, 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 we're at it again, aren't we, second graders, with another installment of Flora and Ulysses. As you may recall from yesterday, Ulysses flew. He flew right out of Rita's gigantic hairdo. Let's find out where he flew to. In chapter 31, Holy Unanticipated Occurrences. Flora watched Ulysses fly over her, his tail extended at full length and his front paws delicately pointed. It was just like her dream. He looked incredibly, undeniably heroic. Holy Bagamba, said Flora. She climbed on top of the booth so that she had a better view. When Incandesto flew, he became a brilliant streak of light in the darkness of the world. He was usually headed somewhere to save someone, and Dolores was always flying at his side, offering advice, encouragement, and wisdom. Flora wasn't exactly sure what Ulysses was doing, and it didn't look like he really knew either, but he was flying. George Buckman, whispered her father. How do you do? Flora had forgotten about her father. He was looking up at Ulysses, and he was smiling. And it wasn't a sad smile. It was a happy smile. Pop, 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 said Flora. There was a long, loud scream from Rita. It was in my hair, she shouted. Someone threw a donut at Ulysses. A baby started to cry. Flora climbed out of the booth so that she could stand next to her father. She slipped her hand into his. Holy unanticipated occurrences, said Flora's father in the voice of Dolores. It had been a long time since Flora had heard her father say those words. His name is Ulysses, she told him. Her father looked at her. He raised his eyebrows. Ulysses, he said. He shook his head, and then he laughed. It was a single syllable. Ha! And then he laughed longer. Ha! Ha! Ha ha! Flora's heart opened up inside of her. Do not hope, she whispered to her heart. And then she noticed that the cook was leaping and twirling, waving his knife and trying to reach the flying s squirrel. She looked up at her father. She said, This malfeasance must be stopped, right, Pop? Right, said her father. And since her father agreed with her, Flora stuck out her foot and tripped the man with the knife. Yeah. Chapter 32, Sprinkles. Now the first page is a series of illustrations. So I'll show you those. Splat, right into the window. Ooh, here's more. I flew. Where is Flora? It, is that a piece of donut? Sprinkles. Looks like he loved those sprinkles and he made them levitate off the donut. What a superhero. Chapter 33. Does rabies itch? His eyes were closed. His head was bleeding. Flora knew from terrible things can happen to you that head wounds bled excessively, whether they're bad or not. All head wounds bleed excessively, she said to her father. Don't panic. Okay, said her father. Use this. He handed her the, his tie. Flora knelt down. She had a very powerful sense of deja vu. Was it just yesterday that she had bent over the body of an unknown squirrel in Tootie's backyard? Was it really just yesterday? Ulysses, she said. She dabbed the blood with the tie. The squirrel didn't open his eyes. An eerie quiet descended. The whole of the giant donut became pre preternaturally calm. Everything, the donuts, the squirrel, her father seemed to hold its breath. Flora knew what was happening. She had read about it in Terrible Things Can Happen to You. It was the calm before the storm. The air becomes still, 
The birds stop singing, the world awaits, and then the storm comes. Inside the giant donut, there was a moment of deep quiet, of collectively held breath. And then someone said, I think it was a rat. But, but it was flying, said another voice. It was in my hair, said Rita. The cook shouted, I'm going to call the cops. That's what I'm going to do. Rita was right behind him. Forget about the cops, Ernie. Call the ambulance. I have rabies. It was in my hair. You, said Ernie. He pointed at Flora with the knife. You tripped me. That's her, said Rita. She's the one. Plus, she brought that thing in here in the first place. Dressed it, dressed it up like a baby doll. I did not, said Flora. Dress him up like a baby doll. And this is all your fault. The criminal element said that sometimes it was wise to put criminals on the defensive by making slanderous or blatantly untrue comments. The surprising unfairness of this tactic will often stop criminals in their tracks. It seemed to work. Rita blinked. She opened her mouth and closed it again. M m my fault? Flora bent over Ulysses and put a finger on his chest. She felt his heart beating in a slow, thoughtful way. Gratitude and relief washed through her. And in her own heart, which had been beating much too quickly, slowed inside her chest. It answered the squirrel's heart with its own measured thud, thud, thud. Ulysses, her heart seemed to say, Ulysses. I'm calling the cops, said Ernie. Uh, George Buckman, how do you do? shouted Flora's father. Is there any reason to call the police? Well, for one, said Rita, it was in my hair. Do you think that the police should be notified of a squirrel in your hair? said Flora's father. The stupidity of this question, its unsettling logic, made Flora suddenly very grateful for her father. She picked up Ulysses and cradled him in her left arm. Uh, I think I can feel the rabies coming on, said Rita. My stomach itches. Does rabies, does rabies itch? said Flora's father. Uh, well, I'm going to call somebody, said Ernie. She tripped me. Whom do you think it would be wise to call in this matter of the tripping, said Flora's father. He opened the door. He gestured for Flora to walk through it. She did. The door swung shut behind them. Run, said her father and they both began to run. At some point, Flora's father started to laugh again. It wasn't a ha-ha-ha kind of laugh. It was kind of a woo-hoo-hoo-wee kind of laugh. He's hysterical, thought Flora. She knew what to do for hysteria. Her father needed to be slapped. Unfortunately, there wasn't time right now. They had to make their getaway. Her father laughed all the way to the car. He laughed when they were in the car. He laughed as they placed his hands at 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock on the steering wheel. He laughed as he backed out of the parking lot and drove away from the giant donut. <laughs> he stopped laughing only once, long enough for him to shout, Holy Bugumba! in the voice of Dolores the parakeet. And then he went back to laughing. Wow, do you think they'll be successful in their getaway? And here's another prediction I'd like you to make. Do you think Flora's father will change his mind about using the shovel on Ulysses? If you do think so, why? If you don't think so, why not? You can tell someone in your house your prediction. And then tomorrow, maybe we'll see if your prediction comes true. Adios. Snow Leopards, hasta mañana.